All right, going to be reading a letter here from uh, the United Arab Emirates, 19th of April, 2018. It takes a little while to get here <laughs> uh, to Maine. Um, dear Brian and Catherine, thank you for your ministry. Please accept my testimony and appreciation. I'm going to leave some of the letter out just because she's in a situation with a husband that's not saved and things, so I kind of protect her identity here. But um, just, just I wanted to read this just to show how the Lord can use even false prophets and things to bring people to the truth. I was bo born again in Christ a few months ago and fell into a wrong movement at first. Chris LaSala and others who would cast out devils. Speaking in tongues never made sense to me, but I did go through a session of deliverance with a lady from Australia through Skype. Your video showed me the truth, and I thank God for leading me to truth. And God will, by the way. You can get saved and get into some messed up things and whatever else, but the point is, when you truly get born again, the Holy Spirit of God will guide you into all truth. So, I'm writing to, to you to express my deepest gratitude to your ministry. You have a God's given wisdom and such a log logic and easy explanation on every subject. I came to see your videos through no other than Chris LaSala. <laughs> um, ha ha. When I saw a video about you exposing the charismatic Pharisees, I repented being in interested in this movement. Um, I'm going to skip the next paragraph because she gets into a little bit about herself. and um, She's Polish and, uh, and everything, but I'm not going to go into a lot of the things there with her husband and whatever because I know that there's a lot of saved sisters, women that get saved, in, in a marriage and the husband's not saved and their husbands are quite antagonistic to their wife's newfound faith. Um, thanks to you, I got to know the Bible version issue and did my research on which Polish Bible to follow. I am reading Bible Jedanska, probably not saying that right, which is almost a word-to-word -to, -word to KJV on my phone as there's nowhere to buy this Bible in the United Arab Emirates. I will buy it this summer in Poland. After watching your videos, I follow scriptures with you in my Polish Bible and find the exact translations. Although I speak English, it is still much easier and natural for me to read the Bible in Polish. You opened my understanding and have been a great, been a huge influence through milk and meat. I know it is all God's doing, but you have a great, great credit here. I thank you so very much. I learned so much from your sermons. Me and my daughter love watching your videos. Her favorite, she's nine years old is about the Lucifer, Lego Bible, and Mark of the Beast. We have our inside jokes based on your videos. <laughs> I'm glad people, you know, again, brethren will get the my weird sense of humor, and my wife's too. But uh, my husband doesn't know. She's reading KJV on my phone. I'm planning to buy a hard copy of KJV on the internet, but my husband controls finances in our family, so I need to figure out how to do it. I once asked him, and he got really mad and didn't permit to get it. I was raised a Catholic, but fell into New Age very deeply around 10 years ago. In the last months of my New Age deception, I had a serious depression, self-harm, and wanting to die. I would sit on my bathroom floor and ask God for deadly disease or sudden death. It was bad. But then God led me to watch a testimony of a New Ager on YouTube and ripped me out of Satan's hands, literally. I repented and repented, cried and cried, and here I am now with an enormous joy and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's really neat to hear that. Uh, stopped wearing makeup, started changing my wardrobe, not raging anymore, humming Polish Christian songs. God teaches me how to be humble and modest. So much beauty in the life with Christ. Yeah, and it's incredible too because you clean up. I've seen this thing with, with multiple saved sisters living real wicked and just real promiscuous and drugs and the whole deal. And all of a sudden they get saved and they start cleaning up and people get upset at them. <laughs> You know, you're thinking, okay, you're doing all this wicked stuff and, you know, risking your health, risking your life. You get saved and you start to clean up and people get mad. It's really odd. But um, continuing here, I printed a few gospel tracts and stapled them. My daughter wanted to give a few to her teachers and a friend. I occasionally put them in parking garage or changing room when trying long skirts. Um, I write a testimony, wrote a testimony email to my old group of girlfriends. Not much reaction there. Yeah, <laughs> and try to witness to my mom and brothers, not my dad, or should I? Um, yeah, there's no problem with that. My mom is shocked and thinks I am crazy, but I can see a crack in the door there, a small opening, so I will try more and more. Again, let me just stop there real quick here, and that is you got to understand, 
you know, I mean, when you get saved, everything's just, wow, this is wonderful, and you want everybody else to have it. And that's great. That's as it should be. But you have to remember, keep in your mind, what most people perceive Christianity is. Christianity, professing Christianity, is a mess. And, you know, I've, I had a brother write to me, and he said, should we abandon the word Christian because of how many people pervert it out there? Catholics call themselves Christians and Mormons and, you know, whatever. No, Christian is a Bible word. Uh, we shouldn't abandon it. But I think it's important to say I'm born again. God's given me a new life. That's why things have changed. Again, that changed life that's there. Uh, that's what the people see, and that's what they they get uh, about and whatever. Um, but, you know, keep that in, stuff in mind. Um, just, you know, come to them and say, you know, um, God saved me. I'm born again. He's changing my life. It's amazing. You know, because you just say Christian, they'll think, well, you know, that could be Catholic or this or that or whatever else. We'll say, I'm a born again Christian. That'd be better. Now, when I read the Bible, sometimes I have a doubt and I question different parts from the Bible. I know it's my lost life talking to me, and I pray for these doubts to go away. I repent every time I have doubts and pray to God for wisdom and understanding. I pray for my lost family and friends. God changes my heart in so many different ways. Um, and I'll just stop there. It says a couple more things there. But uh, thank you very much for the letter. Um, as far as the doubts putting into your mind about the Scriptures, yeah, you'll have those doubts. There's, there will be times that you'll start thinking to yourself, I wonder if the Bible really is true, you know, and you'll start to think that. And then you think about the other option, which is everything came from nothing accidentally at some unknown time in the past. And you go, wait a second, no, nonsense. Um, that's stupid. Evolution is foolish. Um, so, uh, but, you know, when you when you have the doubts about the, the scriptures and things, you know, just Pray, ask the Lord for strength, and just say, okay, Lord, I need to read the Bible more. I don't understand some things in there, but um, the Lord will bring events and situations into your life many times, and all of a sudden it will open up your understanding of a certain verse that you had trouble with before. I've seen that thing all throughout my life. Um, the process of sanctification is a lifelong thing, and it's a wonderful thing as a Christian. As the Lord shows you more and more, um, He gives you more gifts as the longer you live as a Christian, he'll he'll give you more understanding of not just the scriptures, but um, just life in general. And it's just a, it's an amazing, blessed life to be a Christian. Uh, so, thank you very much for the letter. And uh, we always like to hear from people from other countries and things. And and it, you know, America too. That's fine. You know, but uh, it's just neat. We get a lot of correspondence here, and I I don't read them all because just for sake of time, but um, sometimes I you know, read something special and like that. So, um, And, you know, I, I do understand, too, the thing of um, it being very difficult to get the King James Bible in another country. Uh, that is that is kind of a, a problem because here in America, you know, that a lot of these Bible publishers, they don't want to have to charge people, you know, a $40 Bible and you got to charge 60 or $70 to ship it. Uh, but then what price do you really put on the Bible, on the Word of God? So that might be a possibility for us in the future that we'll start to internationally ship Bibles or something and sell them on our website in the future. I don't know, but I know that this has happened more than once. Um, I had a pastor actually in Russia the one time write me and he said, I can't get a King James Bible over here. Is there any way that you know I could order one through local church Bible publishers, get it shipped to you, and then you could ship it to me? And I did that for him. And so I will do that for people. I'll just put that out there. If you're in another country and you would like me to be able to, you know, you can pay for it and all that stuff. I, I can't do it just shipping Bibles to everybody. I, I do sometimes. I'll ship free Bibles. We have these ones right down here. You can see at the top of them, local church Bible publishers. Uh, and they're just, you know, vinyl. They're not leather or anything you know, covers, and, and they're, they're nice Bibles. I'll, I'll show one here real quick. You know, I can, I have shipped these to people in other countries that can't afford to get a King James Bible. I mean, you know, our resources are somewhat limited, so don't ask me for a case of them or something, but, you know, it's, they're, they're pretty nice. They're nice Bible, and um, good starter Bible or whatever else. And uh, I have shipped other Bibles around as well. 
um, yeah, I've had people send me, you know, from here in America, I've had people send me huge, big boxes of these used Bibles and things from bookstores. But the problem is some of them have commentary, and I don't really like to just send commentary King James Bibles to people. Um, so, but, you know, that's something I'm looking into, and a letter like that kind of reminds me of the extreme um, famine, as the Bible talks about back in the book of Amos, there's a famine already around this world. A lot of countries, you can't get King James Bibles. So, But, you know, you might want to look into the thing of trying to get one from the UK, from Cambridge, um, Cambridge University Press. They, You might be a little bit cheaper going from England over to the United Arab Emirates over there. So well, that's what this one is, my, my Bible that I use in all my studies that I've been using for years and years and years. It's a Cambridge King James Bible. So, just some advice, and thank you very much for contacting us, and um, uh, like looking forward to hearing from other people out there. Thank you for watching.